Speaker, we are expecting one of the biggest turnarounds on record while dealing with a whole host of programs and services which were left without ongoing funding. Absolutely. In October, this meant an additional $4.1 billion in spending. In May, we've had to find another $7.5 billion, including $1.5 billion for legacy health funding and to make sure that Australians retain access to their My Health record, and more than $800 million to sustainably fund our biosecurity system to keep our farmers and producers secure. Speaker, our government is building a strong, sustainable care economy that works for carers and for the people they care for, which is why we're extending disability support programs and investing in additional home care packages. We're upholding the security of our nation and the stability of our region, which is why we're implementing the recommendations of the Defence Strategic Review and allocating $1.9 billion to strengthening our relationships in the Pacific. And we're supporting those who have served and sacrificed, which is why we're spending $64.1 million to continue eliminating the claims backlog so that veterans get faster access to the support that they need and deserve. Yeah. Speaker, beyond the immediate pressures on our budget, there are genuine, genuine structural challenge, challenges facing us into the future. Defence, health, aged care, the NDIS and interest payments on debt. Tonight, we're putting in place some modest but meaningful revenue measures to help address this, like tightening superannuation tax concessions for those with balances exceeding $3 million, a 15 per cent global and domestic minimum tax for large multinational companies, changes to the petroleum resource rent tax so that Australians receive a fair return on the sale of our natural resources sooner, raising the tax on tobacco by 5 per cent for three years and extending tax compliance programs. But the inescapable truth is that the federal government cannot put all the services that Australians expect and deserve on a more sustainable footing just by ourselves. That's why the Prime Minister has brought together the states and territories to agree on a new cooperative approach so we can secure the future of essential services and programs that both levels of government support and so we can make sure that the NDIS continues to provide life-changing outcomes for future generations of Australians with a disability. Under Labor, the NDIS is here to stay. Yeah. We are determined to make sure every dollar counts and every dollar goes to improving the lives of the participants the scheme was established for. Our changes are designed to put the interests of participants first as we cooperate to moderate the growth in costs. It took a Labor government to create the NDIS and this Labor government will secure its future. Yeah. Speaker, 122 years ago today, this federal parliament first met. Called to serve a new nation on an ancient continent created by a vote of the people. Today, Australia is bigger, fairer, more diverse, more open to the world and more engaged with our region than anyone alive at Federation could possibly have imagined. And yet what brought this country together was a belief that the future could belong to Australia and that we would be stronger and safer and more prosperous if we worked together to seize its opportunities and share its rewards. Yeah. 